Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and implications of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. April is gone. And before we move on to May, let's take a look back at the highlights of last month in the rejuvenation world. Remember, to find out more about any of these topics, you can visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. The second Undoing Aging Conference was a great experience for the LEAF team. It offered us the opportunity to talk face-to-face with the scientists who, step-by-step, are bringing about the defeat of aging. We posted a number of articles, interviews, and photos from the event, which you can find at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. Here's an interview that we conducted during the conference with Reason about his work with Fight Aging, a longevity science and advocacy blog, and his company, Repair Biotechnologies. I've been around for a while, I suppose. Um, A good going on, I think, close to 20 years now, which is kind of shocking um, at the end of the day. I certainly didn't think at the start that um, I would still be doing this exactly right now. It's getting easier as the years go by, I think, to turn out fight aging on an ongoing basis. And now that I've actually started a company with Bill Sherman, my co-founder, to actually do something interesting and meaningful in the field, it's, um, it's, it's a very big change. Suddenly now I'm a professional as opposed to an amateur who gets to chat to people at the side. So coming to conferences like this one, um, Undoing Aging, right now is, is somewhat different than it would have been in past years had I been a conference-going individual. Uh, there's a lot more professional activities taking place. We're closing an investment round um, for the company talking to a lot of other companies. It's a very different way of looking at the space and what's out there. We're in a poster room right now and uh, there's various things that are relevant to the parts of the field that I'm interested in, such as atherosclerosis and um, immune rejuvenation through thymus regrowth. And it's, it's a different way of looking at things than when you're being an advocate and just posting stuff online to get people talking, which was always, always the point of the endeavor. Fight aging was always a, um, it was meant to be a dial tone in the community, as it were, to ensure that there was always somebody out there talking about the topic so that people who didn't know the community could come and find it, which I think is possibly less essential these days now that there's a number of organizations doing the same jobs, such as the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation and so forth. Uh, And maybe the purpose of Fight Aging shifts a little more to, to pointing out interesting things, because I think there's a lot of stuff under the hood in this community that is not surfacing because it doesn't get much outside the scientific community and the scientific community as a whole is actually very bad at explaining itself. They don't do a good job of that at all. Um, so somebody has to be out there at least saying, hey guys, this thing, it might be a little bit interesting. We should think about it and look at how it compares to these other things that happened over the last 10 years. And maybe we should think about maybe investing a little bit more in this, or somebody should start a company, or maybe it's plausible that this thing could extend life in mice or somebody in, or in people if it was further pursued. And this sort of thinking at the level of, of process rather than science, I think, needs to happen. And we're still a small enough community that it isn't happening a great deal. So I think we're seeing an inflection point in our community as we have a vast influx of newcomers, many of whom are venture capitalists, and um, new companies, entrepreneurs who, who were at the edges, very edges of our community or not even in our community and they've suddenly decided that this is a really great thing to do because the, the incentives have changed. Now it's not a field in which you have to struggle to make any sort of progress and therefore the people who weren't up for struggle were not up for being members of the community. Now it's, it, there's, there's enormous funds pouring money into anything that looks plausibly capable of, of tackling aging. So the, the call has gone out, people are coming in, the, the people who saw this well in advance a couple of years ago, and now their companies are getting to the stage at which they're noticeable. So uh, it's a real 
inflection point. And by this time, a couple of years from now, we will all know fully how well Senalytics work in humans. And these are interesting times, I think. It's, it's if you're capable of starting a company to do something about aging uh, meaningfully at this point in time, never been a better time to do it. We obviously will have a crash at some point in the next few years because that always happens when there's um, a certain level of irrational exuberance and a vast amount of money chasing a small number of projects. Uh, a number of things will get started that are stupid, frankly, and that's unavoidable because that's human nature. It's, it's as soon as you get a very, I mean, look at the dot com thing. It will happen again for aging. There will be a crash. People will say, oh no, it's not working. but significant things will have been done and it, it will be very hard I think to argue against the effects that senolytics have on human aging. If you can crush down inflammation in old age that means no more arthritis to a significant degree. It means probably very little in the way of Alzheimer's. It probably means um, very little autoimmunity, things like that. These, these, A lot of old age problems that are very impactful on quality of life go away with efficient analytics, and it, it will be very hard to ignore that and say that okay, nothing of nothing of use came out of this. In my case, I've always been much more guided by the sense view that if you're not repairing something quite deliberatively and in a planned way, then you're just rolling the dice. Um, hence the name of our company, Repair Biotechnologies. It's it's meant to be a reminder up front to everybody who's in the company in later years that actually, yes, this is what we're trying to do. We were founded last year um, and initially to work on thymus reju rejuvenation. So FOXM1, we like gene therapies. Uh, if, we, if we are any unified thing, we're a gene therapy company. Uh, gene therapies are the wave of the future. They will eventually, I think, re largely replace small molecule development in the, in the biotech industry and pharma because it's much easier to be precise. Uh, and do exactly what you wanted to do and nothing else. Once the hurdles are overcome on the technical side of things, which is happening. So we chose thymic rejuvenation because it's enormously, the immune system is enormously influential and a very large chunk of aging, I think, stems from immune decline. So in a practical sense, I mean, that, that gives you more cancer, more senescent cells, you die from pathogens, you can't be vaccinated, all this horrible stuff. If we can actually do something about that, it should move the needle considerably on a, on a range of, of topics. So there's, a, and it's a very simple, easy target in this case. There's 20 years of work to show that FOXM1, the gene, is a master regulator of thymic growth and activity. And if you just want to make more protein from a specific gene, then gene therapy is great. And in this specific example, it's even better because when you actually deliver FOXM1 to thymic cells, they replicate. So you don't even have to get a very high degree of, of um, transduction in the cells you're targeting. You can get a fairly low, low efficiency and you'll still get um, a bigger thymus because the cells that are transduced will, will go and replicate themselves. And the whole thing just comes down to executing correctly on the animal studies, on the path through the FDA and all that other fun stuff which we are you know, early in the process of doing it. Right now we're, we're doing our, um, still in the middle of proof of concept animal studies, um, which always take longer than you want. And after that, we will determine our final formulation and move forward and make all the deals that you need to make and so on and so forth. Earlier in April, we held our second webinar. This time the topic was on the role of the human microbiome in aging. Dr. Michael Lesgarten, Dr. Cosma Milka, and Dr. Amy Prohl unraveled this fascinating topic and answered the questions of the participating Lifespan heroes. If you missed the webinar, you can find it on our website. If you'd like to join in on future webinars, consider becoming a Lifespan hero. LEAF President Keith Comito has been invited to the XPRIZE headquarters in California to participate in a meeting focused on the organization's Future of Longevity Impact Roadmap. The goal of this initiative is to study the future of longevity and brainstorm what we can do to achieve radical life extension for everyone. LEAF board member Elena Malova recently attended the foundation program of the MIT-based Presencing Institute, an organization that explores, creates, and implements evidence-based social technologies to solve global challenges. 
This educational course is part of Elena's research on how to solve the bottlenecks and obstacles that are holding back the development of the longevity community and its capability to support the creation of rejuvenation biotechnologies. We'll have more on this soon. In April, we published interviews with some of the finest minds in longevity research, conducted primarily during Undoing Aging. Among these were a conversation with Stanford University professor and Turn.Bio co-founder Vittorio Sebastiano about partial epigenetic reprogramming to reverse cellular aging, a conversation with Ethereum Genetics CEO Yuri Dagan about epigenetic alterations, the gut microbiome, and pet rejuvenation, and a conversation with Professor Jerry Shea of the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center about telomeres and their role in aging. We also posted an interview from Undoing Aging with Dr. Jose Cordero about his recent initiative to make the idea of healthy life extension a part of political dialogue in the European Union. Jose has just begun his campaign as a candidate for the European Parliament from Spain. Other interviews include one with Dr. Stephen Braithwaite from Alkahest, a company focused on understanding what causes the rejuvenation effects observed in mice during heterochronic parabiosis, and one with Joan Manick of Restore Bio on the subject of rapamycin. You can find all of these interviews at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now for our research roundup. A new study published in Aging Cell has shown that, in mice, senescent cell clearance facilitates recovery following a heart attack by reducing the development of fibrotic tissues and improving diastolic function, among other things. Stanford researchers found out that by blocking a protein called CD22, it is possible to significantly improve the process of cellular waste clearance in the brains of aged mice yielding an impressive degree of cognitive decline reversal. Researchers based in Toronto have conducted Phase 1 and Phase 2 clinical trials that tested stem cells on patients suffering from late-stage knee osteoarthritis, and the trials have returned positive results. The intraarticular injections reduced inflammation and slowed down the progression of the disease. The work was published in Stem Cells Translational Medicine. Mesenchymal stem cells, or MSCs, have been a topic of great interest in the last decade or so due to their ability to improve tissue regeneration. A recent study from researchers based primarily in Dusseldorf, Germany, found that induced mesenchymal stem cells exhibit a gene expression profile that is typical of younger, pluripotent stem cells, irrespective of donor age. Sirtuins, a family of proteins that facilitate cellular function, have long been implicated in playing a role in the longevity of various species, including our own. Now researchers at the University of Rochester have discovered more supporting evidence that they do. The team found that the SIRT6 protein is responsible for more efficient DNA double-strand break repair in long-lived species. These findings could open the door to interventions that improve the activity and potency of our own SIRT6 genes. One of these researchers, Dr. Vera Gorbanova, will be speaking at our second annual Ending Age-Related Diseases Conference on July 11th and 12th, 2019 in New York City. To find out more about our conference or any of the topics mentioned in our research roundup, you can visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now for some news nuggets. This year's Undoing Aging Conference was extremely successful. It sold out with almost 500 participants, and that led organizers to book a larger venue for the 2020 event, which was announced just three days after this year's conference concluded. The 2020 event will add a special Rejuvenation Now session highlighting the first generation of human rejuvenation therapies that are either currently in clinical trials or are available today. The National Academy of Medicine has launched a new initiative to catalyze progress in the field of healthy longevity. According to the initiative's announcement, at the current pace, population aging is poised to impose a significant strain on economies, health systems, and social structures worldwide. But it doesn't have to. 
we can envision, just on the horizon, an explosion of potential new medicines, treatments, technologies, and preventative and social strategies that could help transform the way we age and ensure better health, function, and productivity during a period of extended longevity. Multidisciplinary solutions are urgently needed to maximize the number of years lived in good health and a state of well-being. Now is the time to support the next breakthroughs in healthy longevity so that all of us can benefit from the tremendous opportunities it has to offer. Johnson & Johnson has recently announced its plans to collaborate with the National Academy of Medicine in this initiative to help people live longer, healthier lives. Samumed, a company focused on tissue level regeneration, has recently announced the beginning of clinical safety trials for a new candidate drug to treat Alzheimer's disease. The experimental drug targets a protein whose accumulation is linked to disease severity. The company also announced new data about a small molecule WNT pathway inhibitor for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. The inhibitor will be studied further during a phase 3 trial in the coming months. Longevity Politics has posted an interview with Felix Wirth, the founder and leader of the German Party for Health Research. In the interview, Felix explains his involvement in the cause for healthy longevity and talks about the party he founded which will participate in the upcoming EU parliamentary elections. The Dog Aging Project, an initiative to study aging in dogs for the benefits of both our furry friends and their respective humans, recently got a new website, which you might want to check out. To find out more about any of our news nuggets, visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related disease. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about it on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Mm -hmm.